Thank you. Hi. So I am Shell Academy. Some of you know me because I do strategy development for your companies. But today I'm going to talk about something that's near and dear to me, and that's becoming a foster parent, which I did at the age of 38 as a never married, uh, no biological kids of my own uh, person. So why become a foster parent? Well, first off, the, the things that contribute towards kids becoming foster kids are huge, and they require long-term solutions. Things like poverty, lack of job skills, drug abuse, those are long, long-term solutions. But becoming a foster parent, a good one, is a great short-term solution for Oklahoma's kids. First thing you need to do is be yourself. You don't have to be married. You don't have to be young. You don't have to be straight. You can be whatever you want to be as long as you're physically healthy, uh, financially healthy, and emotionally healthy. And that's, you know, that's different from everyone else I talked to. I was already too old to adopt when I started researching. And these are some photos of, that's me and, and two of my kids over on your right. And the photo over here is uh, friends of mine, a gay couple who just adopted two kids. Uh, that was a double dad birthday party. I think I was the only woman there. Uh, this is uh, expect shock and awe. I got a lot of, why would you want to be a foster parent? You're a 40 achiever under 40. Uh, and I actually had people walk to, up to me and say, you know, those kids are a lost cause and you're ruining your life. So expect this. People expect you. That's uh, Whoopi Goldberg over there. Uh, she played a foster parent in Law and Order and was abusive and in it for the money. And I think that's what people think. You also get a lot of this in the grocery store, especially if your kids are a different color from you. Uh, people like this look at you like you had too much fun. And uh, you just kind of get used to that. Okay, learn to make a small investment and get a really big return. Small things that you would do for your biological kids, these kids have never had, like a birthday cake, much less a birthday party. Sitting down and doing homework with them, small things. And when you do that, you get a huge return. Academically, physically, emotionally, my kids grew exponentially in all those ways. My two oldest, my eight and 11 year old, they both just got most improved student in their class. Uh, not that I am proud or anything about that. And believe me, I worked really hard. Uh, okay, fourthly, okay, uh, Department of Human Services is everything you've heard except worse. Uh, they are, they're going to make you tell them all your deep, dark secrets. I had to get a letter from my therapist, even though I hadn't seen her in four years. Be prepared to wait a long time, and then they drop off kids on your doorstep, literally. And you do have to be assertive, but you learn to pick your battles pretty quickly. I'm going to let you read this slide on your own. You, you get, be prepared for a less black and white world. Along those same lines, you are not only, you're not only tasked with parenting a child, you're tasked with mentoring that child's biological parents in hopes that in seeing a good parent, they learn how to be a good parent and can eventually be reunited with their kids. This is great in theory, really hard in practice. Make the most of your resources. There's a ton of stuff out there. And if you're thinking about being a resource parent or a foster parent, then you need to start researching quickly. Books, websites, support groups. Get your family on board. Get your friends on board. Cultural resources. If you're ki It's very likely you're going to get a kid that's a different race from you. If you have hair like this, find someone to show you how to do black hair because it's not, it's not easy. All right. Uh, seven, love is not enough. If you're a great parent to your own biological kids, I'm so glad, but that is not going to make you a good foster parent necessarily. These kids have been traumatized in countless, countless ways, and until they feel safe, they are not going to accept your love or give love. You've got to give a lot of compassion, a lot of consistency, a lot of love. Sometimes it's tough, tough love, and only then do they feel safe and secure, and that takes a long time, and they can start accepting your love and giving love. Finally, or excuse me, not finally, number eight, Encounter self-discovery. Sometimes the best day of your life, self-discovery-wise, is when an eight-year-old calls you a mean white bitch in your own home. And this is a staged photo, by the way. I said, sweetie, can I take a picture for this presentation? We laugh about that now. It wasn't funny that day. Uh, okay. <laughs> Number nine is uh, a lot of fun, and this is supposed to be a lot of fun photos, and it looks like we're not going to see them. But <laughs> really quickly... 
Uh, I, for example, I took my kids, you can do small things for these kids and they have a ton of fun. I took my kids last summer to a small uh, Texas beach town and my now 11 year old said, Shelly, I thought the ocean was pretend. So lots and lots and lots of fun. My five year old reminds me when we haven't seen the Chihulis lately. Uh, they just, they really, really have tons of fun. Robbers Cave, Red Rock Canyon, we hit them all. Uh, because they, they just have a great time, and my life is so enriched, so much more than when I lived alone. And then finally, I think I, I, think I messed up the system here, uh, prepare to give them back. About 70% of kids go back to their parents. And even if they don't get back to their parents, family gets preference in terms of adoption. And they might live with you for months or years before they get reunited. However, when you do reunite them with their parents, when you do give them back, you know that you left them much, much better than you found them, and you left the world a better place. Thank you.